Today we're going to be taking a look at Hueling and specifically how to set it up after performing the new firmware update. Now in this video I'm not going to show you how to actually do the firmware update but I will release a separate video on that so please do check it out. What we're going to do in this one is take a look at what you need to do to set it up after actually performing the update and get your sticks calibrated and all of your buttons set as well. Now this update is quite a big one and it has quite a large number of changes including a new Hueling settings app that moves all of the RC calibration and binding into a new area on the remote and I'm going to talk you through that as well and show you where you set the FCC outputs for instance and how you do the actual calibrations and set it up. So the first thing we're going to do is take a look at setting the launcher and I'm going to take you through it step by step and by the end of this you should have your here link basically up and running with all of the basics done and what I will do is then in a separate video I'll actually take you through all of the changes, take a closer look at Solex itself and give you guys an overview of how to do some of the other things that these new features bring. When the Healing boots after the update, the first thing you will need to do is set the home app. Now, when it was originally on the last firmware, it would automatically set it to QGround Control. However, now as we will have the choice of QGround Control or Solex, you have the option of still either setting QGround Control as the main app, but the advice would be to set Healing Launcher, and that then allows you to select between the two apps. So, what I'm simply going to do is click Healing Launcher. Set that as always, and whenever the device boots, it will then give you the two options that you see on screen here. Now, as you can see, we've got QGround Control and Solex, which are the main two applications. After setting up, the first thing I would advise you do is check that your time and date settings are correct, because if these are not correct, it can give you problems later on. Now, to do this, we simply go into the settings menu, scroll down to the date and time settings, you have the option of setting it to automatic, however, you may find that doesn't actually work correctly for time, and I would advise a second actually manually setting it. To do this, you would simply select down, click the date, set the time, and make sure that it is correct for your region. Once you've done that, you can then return to the main screen. The next thing you want to do is bind it to your receiver. Now, the Hueling has a new settings app as part of the new system setup. When you pull down from the top, you will see a radio status option appear there. If you tap on that, that will bring you into the new Hueling settings screen. From in here, you can do the radio binding, you can set the output modes for your country, the ability to share the video with a ground station, and I'll talk about that in another video later, as well as having the option to do the joystick stick calibration and we'll come on to that a little bit more in a minute. So the first thing you're going to want to do is actually pair it to your ear unit. Now to do this you simply want to make sure that your ear end is turned on. Once the ear end is powered up you want to press the pair button on the remote controller then press and hold the bind button on the ear end until it comes up on the screen and says connected and paired successful. Once the pairing happens, you will then begin to see the data rate show on the screen. And as you can see, we are getting uplink and uplink bandwidth show. So that means we are now connected. Further down on the screen, you have the options to set the output for the system as well. Now, currently it is set to Europe because that is the region I'm in. But from here, you can set the FCC or the CE settings by setting it to United States, Europe, China or Japan, depending on which region you're in. Finally, the bottom option is allowing the system to actually share video to a ground station via the telemetry link. And I will discuss that a little bit more in another video, but to be able to use that, you must make sure that video sharing option is turned on. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to do is do your calibration of your sticks. Now to access this, you simply swipe to the left and you will then see the calibration and on-screen stick options. Now, if I move my sticks around, you can see that they actually overlay on the screen. Now, one of the new things as part of this update is that the controls have been moved into this app rather than QGround Control. And for the main sticks, which are part of the system, you need to calibrate them from here. For all of the other buttons, these are all done from within your chosen an app, whether it be QGround Control or Solex, and you map them individually separately in that. Now, the first one you want to look at is the hardware wheel calibration. So to do this, you simply tap on the screen and it will then bring us into the calibration window. Now here it has both the option to calibrate as well as do a test on the wheel as well. The first thing we're going to want to do is click start roller wheel, and then we're going to move it to its furthest extremes on either side 
And as you do this, you can actually see the values change. And once you've done it to the point where you've got it, you then simply click complete. The next thing you can then do is move it just to check that it is working as it should be. And once that's done, you simply click pass. And that is the main gimbal wheel calibrated. The next thing you want to calibrate is your joysticks. So to do that, you simply click on the hardware joystick calibration. On this screen, there are two parts to be aware of. You have the left hand part with the small remote control in the corner, and that is actually showing you what you need to do to calibrate the sticks. And on the right hand side is actually an overlay of what the sticks are doing. And that is part of the testing algorithm when you've actually done the calibration. So the first thing we need to do is click start calibration. And then it's asking us, you can see with the little two red arrows to move the sticks on the horizontal in an out plane. Then I'm going to click next. It's then asking them to put us both in the top right hand corners. Click next. It's now asking us to move the sticks in a clockwise direction at least five times. So what you're doing by this is moving your sticks to the full extremes of their movement. So the system is able to actually pick up how much movement there is on each one. Once you've done that, you move them back to the center and click next. And then that is the main stick calibration done. Now, the next thing you can do is actually check they are performing as you would expect by looking at the bit on the right hand side of the screen. And as you can see, you've got a little red dot and a black dot. Now the black dot is your sticks moving and the idea is to actually hit the red dot. So what we're gonna do is move across to get to the red. And the idea is you do it until you hit each one and this is actually testing that the sticks are functioning as you would expect them to be. And then it does a corner test for it and it might mean a little bit of moving around. And the idea is to hit the dots and once that's done it allows you to hit pass and that is set. The final thing you want to calibrate is the S-Bus output cal. And again, this is setting the output channels on the S-Bus to make sure that they are correct. To do this, you hit that and then you follow the on-screen instructions on the little box on the left hand side. So we put the throttle to minimum, throttle up, throttle left, throttle right. The other side. And what this is then doing is actually doing the calibration for the S bus out. Now that is the main set of calibrations done on the remote control. Now to be able to set the buttons, these are actually done within the app itself. And depending if you're using Q ground control or Solex, you actually configure the buttons within that. Now the nice option is you can actually have different configurations if you're using different apps. Now what I'm gonna do now is take you through actually setting these in Solex because that's my preferred app that I'm using on the healing system. Now to set these in Solex, the first thing you're gonna need to do is open the Solex app. The first time you open it, it will ask you to allow it to have access to certain parts of the Android system. Simply click allow on these. Next, click on the little lines on the top left hand side and scroll down to button mapping. From in here, it allows you to map the functions of the buttons on the remote controller. Now, the way this works in the new healing update is slightly different to the way it did before. Originally, you may have been mapping these to actual SBUS channel outputs. You're now actually mapping it to functions within the telemetry link within Mavlink. So what you're actually doing is telling it to map the function you want it to do rather than the channel. So for instance, if we click on button A and we've got the option for click or long click, if I click on click it gives me the option of setting vehicle mode taking a picture toggle video camera switch map toggle video toggle uid set servo set relay mavlink command arm and disarm so if i now set this to the vehicle mode option and then click the little cog on the right hand side it then allows me to choose the mode that i want it to set to so i can simply click on it and then select the actual mode that I want it to be set to, click OK, and that has mapped that single click to vehicle mode acro. If then I wanted to do a long click to set it for a different mode, I would simply select the bottom one to vehicle mode, 
set this one to stabilize for instance click ok and that is that button mapped if i then wanted to map button b you simply tap b and it takes you to the settings for that once you have mapped all your buttons to the functions you want them to go to you simply click the save buttons function down in the left hand side and that will actually save it to the device Another thing to be aware of on this is mode selection is now actually via the Mavlink connection and not the physical SBUS channel 5 or 7 as we've been used to in the past and that is something to be aware of and it does still work exactly the same as it did before but rather than setting it to a physical SBUS channel you're actually controlling it over Mavlink. And that is pretty much it for this video. Now, one last thing I will mention is after doing this update, you may find that the throttle output on the S-Bus is reversed. If it is, you will simply need to swap that around in your flight control software, whether it be Ardra Pilot or PX4, and you can just click the box that says reversed and it will correct that for you. Now, I will be releasing a couple of other videos on this, so if you're interested in them, please do check them out. If you're interested in getting yourself one of these Hueling systems, the Cube Autopilot, or any equipment, whether it be for a plane, drone, or rover like I've got here, please do check out 3DXR in the UK. They're a main dealer for the Cube Autopilot and the Healing System, but they pretty much sell everything you would ever need to get yourself up and running. So please do check them out if you are interested in getting one. That is it for this one. Please do like and subscribe, and I will release another video again soon.